Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Today is day 18 of Hidden Figures, and today's Hidden Figure is Elizabeth Catlett, who was born April 15th, 1915, and died April 2nd, 2012, and who was an American print artist and sculptor best known for her depictions of the Black American experience in the 20th century, which often focused on the Black American woman's experience specifically. Catlett helped to create what has been called an Afro-fem-centrist. Don't you just love that phrase? Doesn't it just send a little shiver down your spine? Catlett helped to create what has been called an Afro-fem-centrist analytic in modern art. Her linocut series, The Black Woman Speaks, is considered one of the first graphic series in Western art to depict the image of the American Black woman as a complex human being. She was the first Black American woman to receive a master's in fine art from the University of Iowa's prestigious fine arts graduate program. Elizabeth Catlett was born and raised in Washington, D.C. Woo! Shout out to Washington, D.C., home of all types of artists and academics and entertainers. Uh, Elizabeth Catlett was born and raised in Washington, D.C. and was the youngest of three children. Both her mother and father were the children of freed slaves, and her grandmother told her stories about the hardships of plantation life. Her father taught math in the D.C. public school system, D.C.P.S., but died before she was born, leaving her mother to hold several jobs in order to support the household. As a child, Catlett became interested in a wood carving of a bird that her father made, sparking her love of art. After graduating from high school, she applied and was admitted into the Carnegie Institute of Technology, but they rescinded their offer of admission when the school discovered that she was black. Instead, Catlett completed her undergraduate studies in her hometown at Howard University, where her professors included artist Lois Jones and philosopher Alan Locke. She graduated with honors in 1937. After graduation, she moved to her mother's hometown of Durham, North Carolina to teach art at Hillside High School. My family's also from Durham <laughs> in DC. I wonder if I'm related to this lady. However, she became dissatisfied with the position once she learned that black teachers were paid less than white teachers and led an unsuccessful campaign to get equal pay. When the school refused to raise the pay for black teachers, she quit. Although art was not considered a viable career for black women, Catlett became interested in the work of artist Grant Wood and applied to the brand new graduate arts program of the University of Iowa where he taught. Despite being accepted to the school, she was not permitted to stay on campus due to her race and was forced to rent a room off campus. After being admitted, she studied drawing, painting, and sculpture, and Wood advised her to depict images of what she knew best, so Catlett began sculpting images of Black American women and children. She graduated in 1940 as one of three students to earn the first Master's in Fine Arts from the university and the first Black American woman to receive the degree. After graduate school in Iowa, she accepted a position at Dillard University in New Orleans. One of her first actions there was to arrange a trip for her black students to view a Picasso exhibit at a segregated museum, getting the museum to agree to let the class come on a day that it was closed to the public. Intelligent, well-liked, and resourceful, she eventually worked her way up to chair of the art department at Dillard. She spent her summer breaks away in Chicago studying ceramics at the Art Institute of Chicago and lithography at the Southside Community Art Center. In Chicago, she also met her first husband, artist Charles Wilbert White, and the couple married in 1941. In 1942, they moved to New York, where Catlett taught adult education classes at the George Washington Carver School in Harlem and studied lithography at the Art Students League of New York. During her time in New York, she met intellectuals and artists such as Gwendolyn Bennett, W.E.B. Dubois, Ralph Ellison, Langston Hughes, Jacob Lawrence, and Paul Robeson. And somebody just left a comment on one of the old video, one of my uh, previous videos, I think on Ann Spencer, saying it seems like everybody, like everybody from this time period knew everybody. Like if you were alive during this time period, you probably ran into W.E.B. Dubois somewhere. It seems like everybody knew everybody. In 1946, at the age of 31, Catlett received a Rosenwald Fund fellowship to travel with her husband to Mexico and study. She accepted the grant, but shortly after moving to Mexico that same year, Catlett and her husband divorced. In 1948, she entered La Esmeralda, 
also known as the National School of Painting, Sculpture, and Printmaking, to study wood and ceramic sculpture. During this time in Mexico, she became more serious about her art and the idea of art as a career. She also met such Mexican luminaries as Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo, who inspired and influenced her, as well as meeting and marrying her second husband, a Mexican artist. In 1947, she entered the TGP, a famous workshop in Mexico City dedicated to graphic arts, promoting political causes, social issues, and education. At the TGP, she created a series of linoleum cuts featuring prominent Black American figures and ideology, including Sharecropper, excuse me, which is considered one of her most famous works. She has said about her time at the TGP, I learned how you use your art for the service of people, struggling people, to, home, to whom only realism is meaningful. She remained with the TGP workshop for 20 years, leaving in 1966. Her posters of Harriet Tubman, Angela Davis, Malcolm X, and other figures created while she was with the TGP were very popular and widely distributed. However, because some of the workshop members were also Communist Party members and because of her own activism and the radical nature of her work, Catlett came under surveillance by the United States Embassy. Eventually, she was barred from entering the United States and declared an undesirable alien. After she was unable to return home to visit her sick mother before she died, Catlett renounced her American citizenship and became a Mexican citizen in 1962. Her last major teaching position was with the National Autonomous University of Mexico, or UNAM, where in 1958 she was hired as the first female professor of sculpture. In 1959, she was appointed the head of the sculpture department, despite protests that she was both a woman and a foreigner, and she would remain with the school until her retirement in 1975. In 1983, she and her second husband purchased an apartment in New York where they would spend part of the year every year until his death in 2002. That same year, 2002, Catlett rega regained her American citizenship. Although she had one individual exhibition of her work in 1948 in Washington, D.C., Catlett's art was not shown regularly in museums until the, excuse me, until the 1960s and 70s, where it drew interest because of the Black Power social movements and was almost exclusively shown in the United States. Until Catlett regained citizenship in 2002, she was unable to view any of her own collections in the States, with the exception of an exhibition at the Studio Museum in Harlem in 1975, which her esteemed friends and colleagues campaigned for her to be able to attend. In 2006, Kathleen Edwards, the curator of European and American art for the University of Iowa Museum of Art, visited Catlett in Mexico and purchased a group of 27 prints. Catlett donated this money to the University of Iowa Foundation in order to fund the Elizabeth Catlett Mora Scholarship, which supports Black American and Latinx students studying printmaking. The Elizabeth Catlett Residence Hall on the University of Iowa campus was also built and named in her honor in 2017. Catlett remained an active artist until her death. She died peacefully in her sleep at her studio home in Mexico on April 2nd, 2012, at the age of 96. Her work can currently be found in major collections, such as those of the Museum of Modern Art, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the Library of Congress. The Legacy Museum, which opened in 2018 to document the history of slavery and racism in America, also prominently features artwork by Catlett. In July 2020, while closed to the public during COVID, the Philadelphia Museum of Art also featured Catlett's work in an online exhibition. During her lifetime, she received numerous awards and recognitions, including first prize at the 1940 American Negro Exposition in Chicago for work she'd completed as part of her thesis at the University of Iowa. She has also received the Distinguished Alumni Award from the University of Iowa in 1996, excuse me, an NAACP Image Award in 2009, and the International Sculpture Center's Lifetime Achievement Award in Contemporary Sculpture, along with numerous other other awards and honorary degrees. Ultimately, Catlett is recognized primarily for her print work and sculpting, including a 10 and a half foot sculpture of Louis Armstrong in New Orleans and a seven and a half foot work depicting Sojourner Truth in Sacramento, California. 
Her works do not explore individual personalities, even when the subject matter are historical figures like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman, or Rosa Parks. Instead, her sculptures and prints seek to convey abstract ideas and feelings, especially Catlett's own personal notions about the Black female form and contemporary society's intersections of racism, classism, and sexism. She was especially interested in exploring the complex inner thoughts of Black women and the bonds of Black mothers and children, birthing what has been defined as the Afro-femme centrist approach in modern art. Much of her work is considered to be the blueprint for young artists seeking to explore themes of gender, race, and class, despite the fact that she is relatively unknown to the general public. And for a quote from Elizabeth Catlett, art for me must develop from a necessity within my people. It must answer a question or wake somebody up or give a shove in the right direction, our liberation. And that's Elizabeth Catlett, A Hidden Figure. There will be tons of links and information in the description box for you guys to check out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Food for thought as always, and I will see you guys tomorrow with another Hidden Figure. Peace.